You know, I came to him with absolutely nothing and he gave me everything. He gave me everything. And I'll tell you what, I'm a firm believer that when Jesus comes into your life, he don't just change some of the things in your life. I believe he changes everything, don't you? I hear Brother Tim, uh, you know, Brother Tim has a lot, a lot of the same testimony that I have. And I'll tell you what, when the Lord comes into your life, he'll make the change in it. It makes a difference, doesn't it? I remember before I got saved, I tell you what, I was the most miserable man that ever lived on planet Earth. I thought I had a little bit of money gathered up. I had two brand new automobiles. I had a beautiful wife. I still got a beautiful wife. I still got a beautiful wife. I've had her almost 45 years, and I tell everybody I still think she's just as cute as a, a speckled puppy under a red wagon. I tell you what, I love her more today than I did with the day that I married her. The Lord has blessed me. But I believe when the Lord Jesus Christ comes into your life, he don't just change some of the things in your life. I believe he'll change it all, don't you? I believe that he changes everything. We'd like to share a little bit of scripture with you tonight, and with the Lord's help, we'll try to preach for you a little while and get out of the way. But in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I want you to know this wasn't where I was going to preach tonight. I had kind of made up my mind that we were going to go somewhere else. 
But when our testimony started coming and the singing started coming and it all just led, led in, in this direction. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, beginning at verse, verse 14, I was sitting over there thinking about this and I got plum excited within myself. Chapter 14 reads this way, For the love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, and they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we know we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. And verse 17 says, For therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are become old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And we that's where we'd like to preach at for just a little while tonight. You know something, when, when something's brand new, it's unblemished. And you know, that's what happens when we come to an altar of prayer and we have a born again experience in the eyes of God. He sees us brand new. He sees you and I brand new. He don't see any of the sin in our past life. I believe he throws it away as far as the east is unto the west and never to be brought up again. You know something, our, our neighbors may bring it up, our family may bring it up, but God will never bring it up before us ever again. Old things are passed away, all things are become new again. How many tonight feels brand new in the Lord Jesus? I believe you feel brand new when you come to an altar prayer and die out to daily sin, you'll become brand new creatures. When Jesus changes you, he don't just change some of the bad ways that you got. He changes everything about you. I heard someone say, well, when I got saved, I'll tell you what happened. When he changed me, he changed the places that I used to go. He'll change your talk. He'll change your walk. All of that old things are passed away and you become brand new in Jesus Christ. I remember the night that I got saved. i tell you what, I felt just as clean as a brand new baby child. Felt justified. Just as though I had never, ever, ever sinned. When Jesus came into my life, he didn't change some of the bad habits that I used to have. Some of the little bad by words that I used to say, he changed everything. I'm glad that when he moves in, the devil has to move out. I've heard people say, well, I got saved and it took me six months to quit drinking. I've heard people say, well, you know, if you don't see a change, you got shortchanged. I tell you, the God that I serve don't shortchange anybody. He changes everything, but he'll never shortchange you. The Bible speaks that there was a woman who went to a well one day. And Jesus had come into the land of Samaria and he set us on the well about the sixth hour in the day. In the heat of the day, a woman come to draw water. Now I'll tell you something. I don't know about you, but sometimes we talk about folk, don't we? I've heard people say, well, you ought not mess with that person. They come from the wrong side of the track. No doubt this woman, she didn't come early in the morning or late in the evening to draw water, but she came in the heat of the day. That tell, 
tells me that she probably didn't hear want to hear all the cool water cooler talk that went on. When everybody gathered up and talked about her. So she came in the heat of the day to make sure that she would avoid all the crowd. But when Jesus saw her, I tell you what, he didn't care to talk to her, did he? He said, woman, give me to drink. And she said, why is it you being a Jew ask a Samaritan woman to give you a drink? Don't you know that the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans? Well, I tell you what, we've still got some folk out there that we don't want nothing to do with, do we? We've still got some people out there we think that we're just a little bit better than they are, that we ought not have anything to do with. And Jesus told her, said, if you knew the gift of God and who it was that saith unto thee, give me the drink, you would ask of him, he'd give you living water. And she said, sir, the well is deep. You got nothing to draw with. Where are you going to get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us this well and his children and his cattle and his whole family came here to drink? Are you greater than he is? And Jesus said, I'll tell you what, whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but it shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. And then she said, Sir, give me this water. Give me this water that I don't come here to draw again or I neither get thirsty. Then Jesus said, well, go call your husband. And she said, I ain't got no husband. And Jesus said, thou hast well said, thou hast no husband because you've had five of them and the one you got right now don't belong to you. She had come to the well at the, at the midday hour all these times and had never, ever run into anybody. But that day, Jesus took a trip through Samaritan just to see a well, Samaritan woman. I, believe this, I still believe that he come to seek and to save that which was lost. She got so excited when Jesus told her this that she left the water pots and went into the city and said, come and see a man who told me all things ever I did. Is not this the Christ? She got so excited she left the water pots and took the well with her. When Jesus comes into your life, he don't change some of the things. He changes everything. He changed her whole life. And the Bible speaks that at Jerusalem by the sheep's market, there's a pool in the Hebrew tongue called Bethesda having five porches. Bethesda is the house of mercy. It means the house of mercy. I still believe if you want mercy, you got to come to the house of mercy to find it today. And the Bible said that there was a certain man there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. Now, I don't know if he was 38 years old. I don't know if he'd been sitting there by the pool for 38 years or not, but I knew that he was there. There's no doubt in my mind he was there. And the Bible said that on these porches lay all the halt, the lame, the withered, waiting for the moving of the water, for at a certain season the angel of the Lord would come down and would trouble the water. Well, 
I tell you what, the water almost got troubled here a little while ago. I tell people all the time, if you don't want the Spirit of the Lord move out of the way, let me jump in. I'll take a little dose of that. But the angel of the Lord would come down and trouble the water, and whosoever first stepped into the water after the troubling of the water was made whole of whatever disease that he had. Jesus looked at him and knew that he had been in that condition a long time. The thing about Jesus is he knows where you are and he knows what you stand in need of. And Jesus looked at him and said, Will thou be made whole? And he said, well, I have no man when the, when the water's troubled to put me in. And while I'm trying to get in, another one steps down before me. Year after year, season after season, this one man laid there at the pool of Bethesda waiting to get into the water and couldn't get into the water. My Bible don't say that Jesus reached down and picked him up and helped him into the water. My Bible didn't say that Jesus went over and got two people and said, go ahead and put him in the water. He's next one in line for a miracle. But what Jesus said is, will thou be made whole? And all of a sudden the excuses start coming up. Then Jesus said, well, I'll tell you what you do. You take up your bed and walk. Now, I don't know where he got enough faith to believe the word, but I believe that he believed the words that Jesus spoke, and when he believed it, he got up and he walked. Amen. I believe that when he steps into your life, he changes everything. I tell you what, I believe the next day when you went down by the pool of Bethesda, you couldn't find that man. He was gone. Jesus had changed everything in his life. I believe that he don't change some of the things. I believe he'll change everything. I tell people all the time before I got saved that my wife thought I had a drinking problem. I never did think it, but she thought I did. I didn't have a drinking problem. The only time I drank was when I was alone or with somebody. That wasn't no drinking problem to me. I've heard my wife say, well, if he ever quits drinking, he'll have to go to rehab. I want you to know I ain't tended one day at Betty Ford Clinic. I ain't been nowhere at no, at no uh, Alcoholic Anonymous. How did you quit drinking? I didn't quit drinking. I changed water holes. Thank God when he changes you, he'll change everything. I've said this before. I believe you get a good dose of rebirth, you don't need no rehab. I got some rebirth. I'm still drinking, but I'm just drinking from a different fountain. Before I got saved, I was so bad off the neighbor's dogs wouldn't bark at me. My wife would come home from work and take a shower and hit the door and be gone. My children didn't want nothing to do with me. I'm telling you the truth. I tell you what, sin will take you farther than you want to go, make you stay longer than you want to stay. It'll demand the price that you can't pay tonight. But when Jesus comes into your life, he changes everything, don't he? Jesus was walking by one day and the Bible said there was a man there that was blind from his birth. I don't know how old he was, but he was blind from his birth. From the day he was born, he was not able to see. And the 
disciples said, who did sin? This man here or his parents said he was born blind. And Jesus said, neither has this man sin nor his parents, but that the word of God should be made manifest in him. Amen. And when he said that, he spit upon the ground and he took and made clay of the spittle and, and he anointed the young man's with eyes, eyes with the clay and he said, I want you to go wash in the pool of Siloam. And the Bible said that he went and he washed and when he washed, he came seeing. I want you to know I don't believe there was any magic potion in the pool of Salaam. I don't believe that there was any magic ingredients in the clay that he anointed the blind man's eyes with. I believe there was some miracle making ingredient in the faith that it took to walk over to the pool of Salaam and wash your eyes. All of his life, he'd been born blind. Hadn't had the opportunity to see his mommy, his daddy, his brothers, or his sisters. Didn't even know who the preacher was. Then one day he went and washed and all of a sudden, I believe as he splashed that water into his eyes, I believe a little bit of light filtered through. And I believe as he splashed a little bit more in, all of a sudden the images started getting just a little bit clearer. And when he finished washing, he looked up and saw God's great big glory. You talk about shouting, I believe he shouted all the way home, don't you? The Bible don't say that, but if it were me, I'd shout all the way home. I'll tell you what, when he washed, the Bible said that he came seeing. I believe when he came seeing, he didn't have 10, 20 vision. I believe he had 20, 20 vision. I believe that when he washed, he didn't see a little bit of light and that'd be the end of it. I believe when he washed, he didn't see some figures out there. He saw plainly. I believe when Jesus comes into your life, you can see the whole world in a different outlook, don't you? When I got saved, I stepped out on the porch that morning, brother, and I'll tell you what, the sky had never been so beautiful as it was. The grass was never so green. The birds never sang so beautiful than they did with the day that God opened my eyes. When Jesus comes into your life, he just don't partially open your eyes. He'll open your eyes. He'll change everything, everything about you. The Bible says that you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away. All things become new again. Thank God when he changes you, he changes you all the way. You know the story of the Apostle Paul. The Bible said that they took Stephen outside the gates of the city and they stoned Stephen outside the gates of the city. That old deacon that got called to preach, they stoned him. And the Bible said that the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet named Saul. And the Bible said that Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a, a, great, a, a great persecution against the church that was in Jerusalem. And they were scattered abroad except for the apostles. And the Bible says, as for Saul, he made havoc against the church. He went into men and women's houses and hailed them and committed them into prison. He had his mind so set on persecuting the Christian world that he went to the, to the high priest and required letters that if he find any of this way, whether they be men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. You talk about somebody that had their heart in the wrong place, 
Saul had his heart in the wrong place. I believe so. Saul was so full of himself that he couldn't see nobody else. Everything was about Saul. And the Bible says as he journeyed to Damascus, there shined a light around him from heaven and he fell to the ground. Then he heard a voice. He said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, who art thou, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus whom thou persecutest. It's hard for you to kick against the bricks. And the Bible said that when he was raised up, when he was raised up, he opened his eyes and he saw no man. But they led him by the hand into Damascus and he was there for three days without sight. And neither did he eat or neither did he drink. But God had already figured it out on the other end. When God changes things, he changes minds too, doesn't he? The Bible said that he'd already spoke to an old, old disciple there named Dan and Ice, and he said, I want you to go over to the straight street in the house of Judas for one, and call for one Saul of Tarsus because he's down there praying. And he said, listen, I've heard of many people of this man and how much evil he has done to the church, and you want me to go and lay my hands on him that he might receive his sight. He said, go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. He's going to preach to kings. He's going to preach to the Gentiles. I tell you what, I'm going to show him the great things he must suffer for my cause. Ananias walked into Judas' house, and he saw, he saw, saw there. Praying. And he went over and he said, Saul, the Lord Jesus, the same one that you met on the way to Damascus, he spoke to me and told me to come over and lay my hands on you that you might receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. He touched him. And the Bible said, when he rose up, it's as though it was scales that fell from his eyes. I believe that when Jesus comes into your life, he changes everything. And the Bible said that straightway, Peter went and was baptized. I know we got a lot of folk that don't believe in water baptism, but I found it in the Bible. It's there. Saul went and he was baptized. And straightway he went and preached that Jesus Christ is the Son of God right in the synagogue. When he changes you, he changes everything about you. He changed everything about the Apostle Paul. When Saul became little in his own eyes, that's when he became big in God's eyes, wasn't it? I tell you, it ain't all about you, it ain't all about me, but it's still all about Jesus Christ and him crucified. Paul said, I'm determined not to know anything among you save Jesus and him crucified. You talk about a change that took place. I believe a change took place in Saul's life, don't you? The Bible speaks of uh, that Jesus went into the land of the Gadarenes one day. I'm going to try not to keep you much longer, so don't fall asleep on me. Looks bad for my image if you fall asleep on me. I didn't come here to lull you to sleep. I just come here to preach Jesus to you for a little while. 
Jesus came into the land of the Gadarenes and the Bible said that he met a man there who made his dwelling among the tombs. He wore no clothes. Had lost everything he had. I tell you what, the devil's stealing everything that our people has today. He's stealing our young people. He's putting them on street corners. They're peddling these paraphernalia and these drugs right on the street. I tell you what, the devil will steal your children. He'll steal your husband. He'll steal your wife. He'll steal your girlfriend. But Jesus can change everything. People looking for answers for that. The answer still, Jesus. When this man saw Jesus, the Bible said that he fell down at his feet. And he said, I beseech thee, don't torment me before my time. I tell you what, the devil's only got a short time. He's running out of time today. Because the Bible said for oftentimes he was bound by fetters and chains and he was driven to the wilderness, into the wilderness by the devil. And he'd go out there and all night long you could hear him out there cutting himself with rocks and, and bleeding all over the tombstone. You know, the devil will always make a, try to make a bargain with you, won't he? I don't care if you go to church, just don't praise the Lord while you're there. I don't care if you go to church, but see if you can nod off right in the middle of a sermon. I don't care if you go to church as long as you don't get anything out of it. The devil will always try to make a deal. He tried to make a deal. He said, I tell you what, don't send us out in the deep. There's a herd of swine over there. We'd be perfectly content if you just cast us out and let us go into a herd of swine. And Jesus gave them leave to go, and the, they went into the herd of swine, and the swine couldn't even put up with the devil. They ran and ran over a steep place and drowned themselves. I don't know how long this old boy made his dwelling among the tombs. He abode in no house. <laughs> I don't know how long that he was there. But the Bible said that those that, that kept the, the, the swine went into the city to tell what was happened. And when they came back, I tell you what, they didn't find legion out in the tombstone cutting themselves and bleeding all over the place and crying out, but they found legion sitting at the feet of Jesus and he was clothed and in his right mind. When Jesus came into legion's life, he changed everything, didn't he? That's what Jesus will do. He'll change everything. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, I remember when, when he come into my life, I wanted to take him with me. Everywhere that he went, I said, Lord, if you don't want to go with me, just let me go with you. Have you ever heard tell of anybody that got saved or even their countenance changed? They don't even look like the same person. You know, when I got saved, I couldn't wait to tell people. I wore my all bail out as soon as I got home. Everybody I knew, guess what happened to me? Guess what happened to me? Boy, the next day I drove through town with the wind is down. Praise the Lord, guess what happened to me? And then somebody said, you don't have to tell me what happened to you. It shows on your face. Brother, you got a born again experience. Jesus changing everything. Amen. You know, 
know, there was a time when Israel had priests and once a year the priests would go into the Holy of Holies they would take the blood of, of the lambs and the goats and the turtle doves and all of those things I'll tell you what that didn't really satisfy God it only pacified him for a while it only stayed sin for a season it only hid it for a little while. But after a little while, the cloak was taken off. And I tell you what, sin came up and into God's face once again. There had to be a better way. There had to be a better way. I believe that God searched all over to try to find somebody that was worthy. It took a lamb without spot or without blemish. It took somebody that was perfect. And God couldn't find nobody. But I believe the Lamb of God stood up one day and said, Father, I'll go. I'll be the sacrifice for the sins of the world. And he laid off his ro ro the flesh of, or a robe of flesh and put on a, a robe of flesh and came and dwelled among men and gave his life on Calvary one day, brother. And I'll tell you what, you and I have a high priest that we can go into the Holy of Holies. I believe that when Jesus on Calvary said it was finished and the Bible said that the veil of the temple was rent from top to bottom, it was rent from top to bottom to allow you and I access into the Holy of Holies. When he came, he changed it all, didn't he? He changed everything. And had he not come, You know, the Bible said that Jesus said, do you not know that I could call 12, more than 12 legions of angels? And they'd come and they'd take me off the cross. And I believe they would come and they would have taken him off the cross. They would have destroyed this world that you and I lived in and we'd have no hope. But because of Jesus Christ, you and I have hope today. All he would have had to do is say the word and it would have changed everything. One word would have changed the whole plan of salvation. You and I would have no hope. But my Bible says that God so loved the world. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You know salvation is free to you and I. But it costs heaven its very, very best. It costs you and I nothing. But it costs heaven its very, very best. And all he would have had to do is say, Father, send those angels. I cannot drink this cup of bitterness anymore. And it would have changed everything, wouldn't it? But God so loved you and I that his son was willing to leave the ivory towers of heaven and come and live in a sinful world without sin. The Bible said he that knew no sin, he became sin that you and I might become the righteousness of God. When he came, it changed everything, didn't it? When he came into my life, he changed everything. I tell you what, my desire is not to go to the honky-tonk no more. My desire is not to spend all my money down at the liquor store anymore. You can ask some of my old friends. They tell you that I used to be the life of the party. I'd be the first one there. I'll be the last one to leave.
I used to fashion myself as some kind of a great dancer. Can you imagine that? I loved that old 50s music. Fashioned myself to be somebody on the dance floor. I tell you what, the dance floor don't enter my mind. Now, I've danced a jig or two every once in a while, but it wasn't on the dance floor. I've dusted the carpet out a few places I've been, but I ain't been on the dance floor. I tell you what, when Jesus came into my life, he changed everything. He changed the places I used to go. I catch myself at 4 o'clock in the afternoon rushing my wife up, say, honey, get hurry up and get ready so you can get out of the way so I can go in and do what I got to do. We've got church tonight. I tell you what, I spend a lot of time at churches. I've never left one of them with a hangover. <laughs> I don't know about you, but God's been good to me. He's been good to me. I so tickled to death when he saved me, I ain't stopped shouting it from the rooftops. That he'd save an old wretched sinner like me just, just amazes me. That's why that old song, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I'm still amazed at that amazing grace, Tim. I'm amazed at that. Lord, I love the Lord tonight, don't you? He's my everything. What is he to you tonight? He's my everything. He's everything that I've ever needed. I tell the people, I, I tell you what, I spent seven, 10 years in the military, and I've been everywhere. I've seen everything, and I've done everything. I've spent a fortune looking for love in all the wrong places. But one night at an old tear-stained altar of prayer, boy, I got a hold of the throne room of God. And I tell you what, I found out what love's all about. The Bible said, no greater love hath any man than this. Then a man lay down his life for a friend. He said, ye are my friend. I'm glad tonight that I've got a friend called Jesus and he changed my entire life. We know that we've not preached much to you tonight. I want you to know I've had a good time, though. I really have. I've really enjoyed myself. Hope you got some little something out of the message that you can take home with you tonight. The minister had just closed out a revival in a huge Midwestern city, stepped on a train and on his way home found himself seated beside a young man. For nothing better to do, just something to start up a conversation, just something about the weather, just to kind of help to pass the time as they travel. Then he noticed that he didn't receive an answer. He turned to the young man and saw tears streaming down his cheeks. He told him, son, I'm a minister. I'm a preacher. I'll be glad to help you in any way I can. The young man through his tears proceeded to tell a story. He said, Preacher, two years ago I got so mean and hard that my mom and dad couldn't do anything with me. Wasn't anything but a source of embarrassment to them. Things got so bad that I even went as far as to hit my father one day with my fist. He told me then, Son, I hate to do this. It's going to break your mama's heart. But I'm going to have to ask you to leave and get away from here. We don't want to see you anymore. Preacher, I wandered all over this country for the past two years. Then about three weeks ago, I gave my heart and life to Jesus. Told mom and dad what had happened. Told them I'd be on this old train. Told them I was coming home. Preacher said, son, that's all well and good. But how do you know that you're going to be welcome? How do you know everything is forgiven? He said, preacher, I told dad in a letter that if everything was all right and that they could forgive me of all the pain and all the suffering that I'd caused them, 
just to hang a little white rag in the top of that apple tree. I could see it from the train, and I know it'd be all right for me to come home. Preacher, would you look out there and tell me what you see? I want to go home so bad. I'm so sorry for all the heartache that I'd caused. Would you look? See what you can see. See if there's a little white rag on the top of that tree. Well, the old preacher, not knowing what to expect, not knowing the circumstances, dusted the window off the old train and looked out. Turned around and had a big old smile on his face and said, Son, you can relax. That apple tree is in full bloom. And I've never seen so many white rags tied in anything in all my life. And that's not all. Standing out there under that apple tree is Mom and Dad. Waving a big white bed sheet and it says, Come on home, son. Welcome home. And you know, that's just like God. No matter how far in sin we sunk, no matter how we wasted our lives, all we have to do is say, forgive me of my sins. I want to live for you. And you know, he will welcome each and every one of us home. <laughs>